powerful platform for condition monitoring and remote monitoring of diagnostic solutions. Command and control, which looks up what Brian is going to talk about, has cellular solutions combined with our colleagues that are used for CCTV monitoring, providing a real-time view of what our eyes works on. Safe, health and safety enhanced by sensor solutions, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, connectivity to remote sites means that you can provide modern access control solutions like you have in offices on construction sites, which gives you more effective management of personnel. Um, and our cellular solutions are ideal for point to point telemetry, which replacing legacy expensive list lines with an IP based scheme, which also allows centralised monitoring and control. Um, today's presentations are about the future, and to get from where we are today to the future, we need to change. Change is most effective when it leverages new technology or techniques, or uses existing ones in new ways. This is what we call innovation. Modern systems produce huge amounts of data, either deliberately, because that's what they're for, or incidentally, like log files. I think it's fair to say that we seldom consider what else we can get from the data we have. There are many powerful tools available for analysing data which can produce valuable insights in how a business is working. One example I've read about recently was a construction company who analysed the movements of subbies on a domestic construction job and realised their tradesmen were only spending 30% of the shift actually at the workplace. Um, So if we accept that data is a powerful source of business intelligence, we should think about how to get it and what to do with it. It says the right technology will make sure we collect all the available data reliably. We should try and collect it autonomously because this removes human error and effort, saving the expense by using machines rather than people. We need good connectivity to ensure we transfer it securely to cloud storage for analysis. We need modern tools like dashboards and push alerting to ensure we're warned of conditions requiring attention immediately. We need to act on what we find from the data, otherwise what's the point? You can see the outcomes on this slide. I guess the key one for most of us is reducing costs. You can see on this slide the well-known Gartner Gartner view of emerging tech we can expect. I don't know if you can read the annotations on the chart, but one of them is 4D printing. I didn't actually know what that was, so I googled it this morning. Apparently it's 3D printing, but the object changes with time, or with temperature or humidity. So it's a 3D printed object and then changes. I particularly love Gartner's trough of disillusionment. It's quite an interesting idea. New communication technologies and I'd add television white space to the ones listed there. Uh, will allow fast, cheap, long-range connectivity from IoT devices using very little power. And that means that a sensing system, which has, say, half a dozen sensors, which currently would share a cellular router's connection to the internet, will each be able to have their own comms on board. They'll only need a little power, and so solar becomes viable at low cost at last to function autonomously. We've shown on the slide some of the likely new sensor use cases, but these will only be limited by imagination. So I've shown you on the top left a new product we're rolling out later this year, Sensor Scan. It uses combinations of commercial off-the-shelf sensors with inexpensive embedded computers to capture almost any type of read you can think of, from airborne dust through noise and temperature to breath alcohol which could perhaps be combined with access control we were talking about earlier to stop people even getting on site at the local link. The system can be hand-carried or fixed, perhaps to a pole in a barrel, and provides real-time dashboards and logging to the cloud data space. On the bottom left is a tracking system for gritters used by a county authority, capturing not just location, but spread controls and volume of grid dispensed. This sounds futuristic, but it's actually in use today, and it's going to become more and more prevalent. The image on the right shows the many applications of sensor technology to a big landmark job. 
one important benefit of IoT technology, as you can see on the of that image, is wearable sensors. We've started developing a wearable sensor platform, and we're sure in a couple of years' time, wearing sensor-rich PPE will be commonplace, allowing employers to prove due shift care conscience regarding noise, dust, and vibration, at the very least. Geofence. Uh, Geofence is another one of our products. This isn't just a sales pitch. Geofence protection of your workers is an important tool in the due diligence toolbox. Our system allows dashboard view of the location of all operatives and gives a normal and visual warning of preset distances from a hazard. These hazard areas are drawn in moments on Google Maps and uploaded to a web portal. Future enhancements will allow automated analysis of operative location to ensure they are where they should be and aren't where they shouldn't be. For big construction sites in the future, we'll have automated dispatch of the nearest first aider to an incident because the system will know who all the first aiders are and where they are. So you can say there's an incident there and it will automatically dispatch the nearest one to it. Real-time data analytics will allow comparison of workforce numbers in specific parts of a job with a scheduled resourcing and alert the dashboard if insufficient staff are working. So if your schedule says you need seven people working at that site on that particular day and there are only five, it'll warn you that they're not all there. Okay, um, I've actually set a geofence up around the race course here today. Um, and I've got a, a device running the application. If anyone wants to see a demonstration, I can show you later. Uh, and I have that to Brian to check the little bit of the Thank you so much, Luke. Jonathan serves himself a bit short on the um, application that you saw for Geofence there. One of our clients was recently fined a significant amount of money for running over some very rare orchids with a little mine. Um, yeah. The cost of developing that solution wasn't at all. It was far, far less than the fine. But the problem is then you've got to build in, there's an audible warning and a visual warning for the guy operating the little mine. But actually what you've got to do is be proactive to start managing things and making sure that that operative, that shuffle pilot, whatever you want to call them, knows what their responsibilities are. And if you have to intervene, we haven't got to the point where we can electrocute him and say, stop that. We can use some other technology here to make them stick. Um, back to control centres, which is, is where we end up taking the state. A lot of businesses, whether you, this is a controversial statement, invest so much in technology that they don't exploit it. I found, I go into clients and they say, yeah, we've got vehicle tracking. They go log on for them. And I go, I can't remember the password. And it's that where the control element comes in. Allowing one person to exploit what you've invested in. You as a very, very competent person to exploit the sensors, the tracking, and all the other things. And it also touched back to compliance as well. In many investigations into accidents, people said, well, he didn't do what he was supposed to. Proactively monitoring what people are doing from the sensors, with again, a very good, professional kind of organisation, gives you the ability to prevent as well. So that proactive management in real time becomes quite important. So, we've got too many minutes in. Um, I've just spoken about risk minimisation. A lot of the things that we build and we do and we take from data, you still have to put something in it to make sure that you pull that risk out. If you've got, as Jonathan says, people going where they shouldn't go and intervening in real time, you will get to the point where you can minimise the risk of it. Telemetry is about taking the action to prevent those incidents, as we said with the grass cutting. The other thing is about making the information visible. So the real-time data that you're getting from all of your systems, wherever you've got, 
whether it's someone using a telephone to bring in, record something, we can make it visible to make the benefit of the value of the benefit of the benefit mentioned earlier on about works management solutions and various other methods. There's huge amounts of value in there. We've got a guy who always does a job on a Friday afternoon at a certain location. But no one actually, unless someone's looking for that, it's about who you think and using it. So the definition for me around control rooms and the future of control rooms goes back to 2001, I nicked it from uh, the US Army, it's very simple. It's a designated commander. Could be one of you in the room, it's the commander. But you've got to have an arrangement of the right equipment personnel to do your task. It doesn't change, it's no different. But the only way you're going to get it right is if you manage it from a place of knowledge and command things in real time. You will probably do that now, but focus it to use the data that's available to you. Highways struggle to take a car um, Some people are using it, you're all here because you use technology. But the highways industry has struggled to use emerging technologies. So you talk about the ability to do more things remotely, monitoring things remotely. Jonathan and I have looked at projects for managing multiple traffic services where traditionally you might end up having to have someone stood there. In urban city centres you have an urban traffic control room. Why are we not doing that on the mobile there? So looking at how we can look at that emerging technology and that smart intelligence, you could have 150 sets of traffic lights with one guy managing because you're only managing by exception. The telemetry there allows you to do that things, but that brings it back to using a mark by brain attached to artificial intelligence. This is a brand new set of So there's a lot about building that in. And the industry is one of the least progressed in terms of R&D. Margins are slim, margins are tight. But unless we start looking in the highways industry, the traffic industry in this country, and investing some money in that research and development, we're still going to be doing what we've done, because we've always done. So again, it's a challenge to the people in the room, is where do we push forward with the technology? How do we find the funding tech? We find that from being more efficient. We find it from being able to do multiple things with one or two very clever things. So, I've already mentioned about the automated plant machinery. There are ways through telemetry to actually get things to do things remotely. Again, with the right connectivity. The AI part of it, making smart decisions from video analytics. Video analytics is an incredible powerful tool, but the industry doesn't use it. A few years ago, in a waste facility, we were recognising the colour of people's PPE. If you had yellow PPE on, you were authorised to get onto a certain piece of paper. If you had orange on, it shut down there. That, that technology has been around for a lot of years. Where can we utilise that with the thing? We've even had some technology in London where we're recognising the logos on people's PPE. That's a bit scary when you're looking at how people are utilising traffic management in the London. And that's on a camera network that already exists. So a lot of things now understanding what you can do with the technology. There's a little word in there, or three letters in there, called BIM. Everybody talks about BIM. Everybody talks about it. It's a utilisation of technology is the best way to explain it. The problem is, you say to a set of guys on a traffic management job, well, it's in the diagrams, it's in the layout, and you say, yeah, but that's back in the office, I didn't print it and put it in the pack. So when these guys come in, and you put the office on the ground, and you don't go back three or four times. And more importantly, what you're looking at is in the control room, whether the guys have opened up the safe again, whether they have read the information, they're exploiting the, the embedded data and the underlying data to, them to improve what the business does. 
So, I know everybody's hungry, but we get it. A lot of this is around how we exploit professional people the connecting people and clients, as mentioned earlier, um, the share of knowledge. I don't think anything we record should ever be hidden. I think we publish it as a capture. That's dashboards or whatever you want to call it, push information. Because nine times out of ten, people get that information and help it. It's, it's just there. But it's that ability to make those operational decisions in real time, which gives you value, which allows you to reduce your costs. So the time is pretty now to start thinking about all this data that exists, exploiting it on my back. So this is my last slide, and it's quite an important one. It's about people, and it's about the step change. If you go to somebody and say, I'm going to put that technology in, and I'm going to replace you. The most valuable person you've got goes. Actually, what you want to say is, I'm going to put that technology in, and I'm going to be able to do more. And I'm going to be able to help you, and I'm going to get better value about what we're Whatever I do with this, and whatever the control rooms and pictures around the edge of it, the people who have the biggest challenge are the people who adopt the technology and see it for the benefits of it. Some people struggle with it, and you have to help them to understand what you're trying to do. I think Brian made a point about doing more. Do more and food and do more in a better way. This bit is at the end, because the less we deal with the challenge and the big challenge, the future is much, much, much harder to actually do. We've got a number of clients where I mean, they say, oh, I want this, I want that, and they say, so, actually, no, you don't know, because you know what the process is for your people to understand what's going to be better. And they just look at us and say, oh yeah, maybe you're right. But once you show someone what they're really doing, and say, how about we made it so you can get the daily work in advance? Oh yeah, that would be brilliant. Not we well, come up in the office and there's an admin person who's going to produce it, but the admin person's out of the job. It's about getting the benefit of the advantage of what you do and how that affects your business. I believe that is going to slip to my side. So these are all in the side. But the most important thing for me is around using your best assets. Data and some people. Oh, that's me, that's right.